Hello, this is Ever, Ever Swarter Colors. Welcome to my classroom. If you've ever wanted to capture more depth in your painting, this video is for you. I want to take you over to my painting table and then we'll go over what we reviewed last time and uh, we'll start from there. So let's get started. The last video I had was called Composition Value Plan for Watercolor Painting. And if you haven't seen that, you want to go back and take a look at that. I took this composition photograph of a local uh, farm area and I created a sketch from that photograph. And with the sketch, I also developed a value plan. Now the value plan here shows the dark background, a light middle ground, and a middle value foreground. Now this first stage, I sketched in the sketch that I showed you before onto a quarter sheet of watercolor paper, cold press. And then I sketched it in, and then I went ahead and put in a gradual color shift. Now what do I mean by gradual color shift? Let me all do a demonstrate a portion of this. Okay, I'll take this section over here and I'll show you a portion of how I did that. So I'll take a plain piece of paper and I'm going to mix up uh, three colors. Uh, lemon yellow. And I go into an area that I want to start painting and I'll put that lemon yellow right in that spot where I want to start. I rinse out my brush. Change color. This time I'll move to a green number one. Notice I start out to the side of that. Then I bring it across the other color so they blend. And I'll do that one more time. I'll take a, I'll take a light blue. In this case, a cerulean blue. A light blue. Same value. And I start away from that color. And I bring it in gradually. And if you'll notice that there's a gradual shift of color in this case from blue to green to yellow and then I want to run across the painting that way. So that's how I did this first phase of painting and number one it's a light value, number two it's warm colors all the warmest color in my palette, blues, light greens, yellows. This happens to be opera, which is a very bright, light red. And this is uh, peacock blue and so forth. And a little bit of yellow ochre. But that is the result of a gradual color shift across the middle ground. Now this area is also probably going to be containing my impact area. So these bright colors will assist me in making the painting very uh, dramatic in this area and we'll make it show up much better with the bright colors. Okay, now the second phase will be to work on the background and the foreground. Now, if you recall, the background will be a dark value and the foreground will be a light, a medium value. I've gone ahead and I've actually put in the foreground to speed up the process here. And you'll notice in the foreground, <clears throat> up here to the left, this is a medium value. I used a sponge. I took a natural sponge, and then I dipped it into uh, a dark color. In this case, it was uh, blues mixed in with some greens. And then I filled it up with paint, and I went in and textured in those particular areas. Makes it look like an old bush or an old, old, old trees. Now this section in here of the foreground, I did with splatter. And what I did there was I loaded my brush up with paint. And then I came over to the, over to the painting and I actually tapped it down on my hand across here several times. And I picked up different colors. I used green, a little, sometimes a little yellow ochre a little bit here, a little darker greens even a little touch of blue. Then I went and washed the brush out. Remember, there's, there's, there's paint here that's wet on the paper. I rinsed the brush out with just plain water, then came back and tapped it with just plain water. And what that does 
it expands the paint that's down there on the paper and, and separates the, uh, the droplets of paint. And when it dries, it gives you a nice loose textury look of weeds and grass and so forth. And on the right over here, I just mixed up another bunch of colors. In this case, I added a little bit of uh, quinacridone violet and some yellow ochre along with greens. And I use regular brush strokes over here. Just regular brush strokes to get this effect over here on this side. So in this particular area in the middle ground, I used four different techniques. I used uh, the sponge, the splatter, and water splatter. And over here, I used the uh, brushwork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate to you, though, the background. Now, in the background, it's very interesting. When I look at that, I know I want a dark value. When I look at the painting to do the painting, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, I really have to have a dark value back here. But behind that, this is a horizontal plane. Behind this row of trees back here, these are low, low ridge mountains. Those areas are further back. So to show depth, I have to go from a dark to a lighter value and it gets cooler in color. If you looked out over the horizon, if you looked at the far distance hills, in far distant mountains, they turn different colors. They turn lighter color and they turn cooler. Sometimes they look blue in the background. So I'm gonna use, a, I'm gonna use three colors to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a bigger brush. So I'm gonna demonstrate that this on this paper. I'm gonna mix up the light blue, in this case, cerulean blue. And I'm actually going to paint that color right in over in the background. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hair dryer on to dry that. Now, if you notice there, as I was hair drying or drying that particular area, I was testing it to see if it was dry. And what I do is you, you put your hand down on a dry area and compare that with where you are. If it feels a little cool up there, it means it's still damp. And my, my dryness check passes, okay? This, paint, this part of the paper feels the same as this part up here, which means it's dry. Okay, now what I wanna do now is mix up a little darker value of blue, because I'm coming forward now from that low hills in the back, way, way in the background, I want to get a little bit darker, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of cobalt blue, a little darker value now coming forward. And what I'll do is I'll, my little test, little piece of test paper here, I'm just going to make sure if that's the right, the right value one. That looks about right. So always have a t take a test piece of test paper and check your color out before you actually put it on your actual painting. Okay, I like that. Okay, so. Color's been mixed. Now what I do now is I'm going to paint across that area and then I'm going to put in the low contours of some rolling hills way off in the background. And come right on down to just before I reach that middle ground. Okay, now that's looking pretty good. Now you see the depth there already. I see a light in the background as I come forward, a little darker. That's really looking great. So I'm going to dry this one out. Do my check, everything's fine. The paper's dry. And now we'll go to the third application. Now this is the part that shows up in the value study. This is the part that will show up dark behind those uh, 
middle ground trees and buildings. So I'm going to mix up the darkest value I have. And here I have uh, a royal blue, <clears throat> royal blue, which is very dark. I want a variety of color here because I'm getting a little closer to the impact, to the impact area. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of green. This is hooker screen, which is a, a dark green. So I'm in the background now and I'm, I'm working with dark colors next to the middle ground. And I may even pick up a little bit of uh, quinacridone violet, a little bit of, no, again, for the sake of changing colors, a variety of color, even in the darks is important. It shouldn't be all one color. Anywhere, everything should have a variety, a variety of color, a variety of values. I'm going to do part of this and I'll show you the end result. I'm just going to go a couple state, a couple sections here just to show you what this will look like and then I'll show you a, a finished portion. So I'm going to turn the brush, turn the uh, penny around so I can see it better and also so I can get up close to some of this detail. So around the impact area, there's going to be detail, there's going to be sharper edges. And a lot of dark color next to that whites. This is where you get the contrast to pop out. And up here, as you go into the other color you have down, this is where your variety of shapes and sizes will help. I'm changing a little bit of color, put a little green now alongside with that blue. And I even, I'll just go a little bit further just to demonstrate a little bit more. As I get around some of these uh, closer areas, like right next to this shape here, I don't, I don't even worry about what it is, just a shape that I've drawn in the sketch. All this sketch right now is just a guideline, a guideline to tell me how far to go and it doesn't tell them, I don't worry about what it is because I've already painted the object so far. Don't worry about that. I just, now I'm concentrating on values. I'm concentrating on edges and getting down the right amount of contrast. And just a little bit more, just to, so you can see in this area, you want to take your time because this is where your, your focal point is. And up here, get rid of some of these whites, which is still up on the. And actually, when you paint upside down like this, you can see a lot more of your design upside down because here I can see some of these edges are not changing. Okay. And you can, while it's still wet, you can always go back in and add in some more dark just to make sure it's dark. You can always add paint while it's wet. It's nice. The paint will flow and you can always add more value. Okay. So that's an idea I've done in the background. I've done three layers. I did a light value of a light color of blue, a medium color of blue, and then a real, real dark color of blue, greens, and, and even the guanacridone violet. And I would do that all the way across the middle ground. Let me show you now. I'll show you a stage where I've done that and completed it. Wow, look at the difference. Now you can see where the middle ground, all these light colors, and now right behind that is the dark color behind it. And then of course the, the hill, the low lying hills behind that. Okay, so that demonstration here shows you what happens when you put that dark against the light, which is what my value study. My value study showed I wanted a dark value behind the light. And then behind that dark value, though, I noticed, I've also noticed that because it's a horizontal plane, I need to go back with lighter colors as I go back into the distance. 
Okay, now, while I have this part of the, the uh, section done, let me discuss also how, how I prepared and how I finished the ground. We did the middle ground, we did the background, we did the foreground, but we had this whole area of pasture area here uh, in the middle. So what I did here was I used spray bottles. I have three spray bottles of uh, different colors. I have a yellow, a green, and a dark green. And I sprayed them down to show me a light to dark value. So I went from a light value here and moved forward to a darker value as I came forward. Okay. Let me demonstrate that to you. I'll take a piece of paper and show you how I did that. Now the first thing I did when I, I don't pretend there's buildings up here, but uh, I put, I covered the, I covered the middle ground up, of course, with, with a towel, the cherry cloth towel, or your paper towels. And then up here, I have, I have three spray bottles. I have a yellow and I have a yellow, I mean, I have the yellow, uh, just the same as my palette, the, uh, yellow, uh, uh, lemon yellow, then green number one, and then green number two. These are all on my palette. But I put them in a the spray bottle. These are the finest spray bottles that you can, that you can use. Right? Now mix that up with water. Now, the first layer, the first layer I'm gonna go across right from that middle ground and I go and I spray across. That's the first value, okay? Now, let that dry just a few seconds. And then I come back with the next color, which is green number one. And that's the second layer. Now you can see as I'm coming forward now, I'm getting darker. So light, darker, and then one more, one more level. And that's even darker. So as I come forward on the ground, okay? So that's a quick demonstration of using a spray bottle technique to add the ground to the painting. So I would use the yellow, the green, and the darker green down here, of course. Now the last stage is gonna be put in detail. And I think this is uh, probably the, the fun point. I'm looking forward to, to showing this part. Uh, let me show you what's, what's happened here so far, what I've done. I've taken this painting a little further along and you can see here I've added in the middle ground I've added some darks and values. What I've, what I've done is I've added the shadows which pu pulls out some of those light colors. I've added also look at look how, how it was painted. I have a light against dark and a dark against light and then this dark value is against this light value and that light value is against this dark value. So alternating those colors, darker colors, pulls out those particular objects. Over here, there's, there's a light value, then you hit a little bit of dark value back here. But that dark value in the background really pulls out the, uh, the those light colors in the middle ground, okay? Then I added these fence posts, and I, I also painted in, right now, the starting point of the fence line here in the foreground. Okay, now let me show you a few things here that we can uh, add to this. This is almost, I would say this painting right now is about, I would say 80%, 85% complete. Uh, and I did add the sky in up here. You see the light and the darker value, the darker value here and down to a light value just above the, the uh, skyline. And I've already put the ground in. Now let's go and look at what details. You could spend a lot of time on a painting at the end on the finishing touches. But uh, I'm going to show you just a few things here. I put in, I put in this fence line, and basically I can improve on that just slightly. Let me show you a couple little pointers here. I'm going to mix up this, uh, mix up a darker brown or a darker color than what's here on the on the painting. I mix a little blue I'm in with that brown. And I'm gonna go behind this section right here. And I can make this look like it's 
The other log is coming inside of that. And then I can re-wet the brush and I can do a nice blending, a little blending on that. It gives a little dimension to this particular fence post. And now I can show that on a close-up. It might be easier to see on a close-up too. There. As I bring that in, you can see the little, just a, just a little dimension on that particular fence post makes a makes a little bit of difference. But these are the kinds of details you could do on a final painting to really uh, bring out some factors. Another area you could show this part of the fence as a sh you know you've always got something this could be a, a square railing or it could be a round railing but you can give it a gradual a gradual shift from light to dark to show that it's got some dimension to it so you can you can go along and play with this and this fence post here the same thing put a little dark behind This fence post here is saying, this is the last one I'll do, but this, this one here, I just want to get, give you the idea of what you can do. You can go behind this one and give it a little more, a little more pizzazz, a little more, a little more definition. And this is just fine tuning the painting. I mean, you can go back and do a lot of, play, do a lot of stages like this. And this is what makes the paintings interesting. Makes them pop a little more and then back here in the background if I'm gonna, if I do some changes up here in the foreground I'm gonna make some changes in the background because it's a uh, if I make a change one place I'll, I'll do another change somewhere else. I don't want to make an isolation isolated change somewhere I want to make a change all over the light may be coming in from this direction from left to right and I'm on my right to your left there we go coming that direction so I'm going to put shadows indicating um, a shadow pattern, indicating the, the direction of light. And I could add that up here in the fence line. And again, don't, not to overdo this, but just to show you some things that can be done to add add more more and more detail to a painting. Let's see. And even along, just one more little touch. Even along the this, I want to. Okay. Even along the edge of the building here, you can show a little shadow pattern coming off that uh, building, hitting the ground a little bit. And I could do this, I could do this all along here, showing little shadows coming off these particular areas. Okay. Okay. Now let me go back and give it a wide shot. One more look at the uh, overhead again. Okay. Now looking at the overall painting, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty well satisfied with what, what happened here. The, uh, the end result was, that I wanted to show depth in this particular painting by having a dark background and a, a medium uh, foreground. Now, the last thing I do before I leave today, I wanna show a final check I do. I always, I always get a, a, a mat out, a colored mat, and I put that over the painting just to take a look, just take a look at it, see what it looked like when, if it was framed. And you take a look at that, and I'm really happy with what happened. I see the sky there. I see the, the sun coming through. I see the shadows on the ground. Uh, I see nice texture here in the foreground. And the, the fence line actually is a good uh, directional path because the fence line will pull your eyes right into the impact area. And your impact area will go there. And there's even a little fence line off here in the background will bring you around. Then you'll go back in. So your eye will keep moving around the painting and that's why I would design it that way 
uh, to help the viewer enjoy the painting. Uh, I thank you for joining me today, and uh, you have a nice day, and uh, we'll see you next time.